Welcome fellow plant enthusiasts, I'm Steven from Steve's Propagation Corner and I'm thrilled to bring you another intriguing episode of The Foliage Files. In this series, we dive deep into the secrets of plant life, learn practical tips for caring and nurturing our own green companions, and explore the incredible diversity of plant species from around the globe. In our enthusiastic perspective, there's no space that can experience a remarkable transformation with the introduction of a beloved houseplant. Beyond merely adorning interior spaces with vibrant hues and dramatic flair, Flora possesses the magical ability to infuse an atmosphere with a soothing sense of serenity and calm. Scientific studies have illuminated the fact that tending to plants regularly can effectively lower stress levels, elevate one's spirits, and enhance focus and productivity activity by a remarkable 15 percent. Despite the tremendous benefits humans have reaped from the practice of nurturing potted greenery indoors, it's essential to acknowledge that plants were never inherently destined for indoor living. Throughout the annals of history, various civilizations have experimented with the idea of incorporating nature within their abodes. However, it wasn't until Victorian England that architecture truly embraced the concept of accommodating plant life. This pivotal shift occurred alongside the adaptation of larger windows and higher ceilings in buildings, coinciding with the newfound capability of heating homes, which allowed for the indoor cultivation of plants, especially those hailing from warmer climates. During this era, exotic plants from the British colonies were transported to England, sparking a fervent fascination among the Victorians for collecting these botanical treasures. The maiden her fern, for instance, soared in popularity to such an extent that it earned the moniker Victorian Parlor Fern. Young women were so captivated by the pursuit of these ferns that a novel term, pteridomania, was coined to describe the frenzy. Since these bygone days, houseplants have cemented their status as essential components of well-designed living spaces. Yet, akin to all elements of interior decor, the world of houseplants has not been immune to the ebb and flow of trends. Today, we embark on a journey to revisit some of the most iconic houseplant fads spanning decades, commencing with the 1940s. It's vital to recognize that our research primarily draws from mainstream media sources such as television, magazines, and books, thus offering insights into the taste of primarily middle to upper class white American families. There were undoubtedly many simultaneous microtrends that weren't as well documented and thus may be absent here. Join us as we delve into the captivating world of houseplant evolution. In the 1940s, as the United States joined the ranks of nations in World War II, a significant portion of young men departed for overseas combat duty. In their absence, numerous women stepped into the workforce, filling the roles they vacated. This transformation had a notable influence on the design of offices and businesses, prompting a shift towards a more welcoming and homely ambiance. As a result, Women working in these settings started adorning their desks and windowsills with potted plants, seeking to evoke the comforting atmosphere of their gardens back home. This simple act marked the nascent ascent of the houseplant's popularity. During the 1950s, specific tropical plants such as bromeliads, birds of paradise, and philodendrons experienced a surge in popularity. This botanical trend was deeply influenced by the sentimental allure of an idealized South Pacific paradise and the fervor surrounding tiki culture. These plants served as evocative symbols, conjuring feelings of escapism and a journey for far-off travels. They were part of a broader fascination with Polynesian aesthetics, which included the elaborate cocktails garnished with paper umbrellas and pineapples, the imagery of hula girls, imitation tiki figurines, and wooden carvings, as well as the iconic Hawaiian shirts for men and sarong-inspired dresses for women. Meanwhile, the conclusion of the war and the subsequent baby boom ushered in a period of suburban expansion across the United States. This expansion brought about a heightened demand for both new homes and contemporary furniture that could be rapidly produced, 
harnessing the latest technological advancements in materials like plastic, lucite, plexiglass, and vinyl. Concurrently, as the middle class burgeoned and consumer culture thrived in the 1960s, a broader array of houseplant species seemed to become more readily accessible. Common choices included snake plants, begonias, golden pothos vines, and African violets. Yet, amidst this vibrant era, nothing quite encapsulated the spirit of mid-century style like the split-leaf philodendron, affectionately known as the Swiss cheese plant. The 1970s witnessed a surge in the popularity of indoor plants as they found an even deeper integration within home interiors. Hanging baskets suspended by macrame cords and trailing vines artfully winding their way along trellises played a crucial role in tempering the prevailing geometric and angular architectural designs of that era. Furthermore, wild and gracefully flowing plants introduced an additional layer of texture and organic charm to the often pattern-rich textiles and the earthy wood paneling frequently employed as wall coverings. It's worth noting that the 70s emerged as the heyday of ferns and spider plants in indoor gardening. In the 1980s, indoor plants found themselves frequently relegated to the expansive, spa-inspired bathrooms that were characteristic of that era. These bathrooms often featured amenities like gym equipment and whirlpools. In other parts of the home, interior design leaned toward a glossy and somewhat artificial aesthetic, rather than embracing natural elements. However, when plants did make an appearance, they were usually chosen for their ability to make a dramatic and extravagant statement. Palms, in particular, were favored for this purpose during this decade. One of the most notable contributions of the 80s to the history of indoor plants was the emergence of American Mall atriums and food courts. These spaces were teeming with skylights that allowed ample natural light to cascade onto lush flora and decorative fountains, creating a vibrant and inviting ambiance. During the 1990s, bamboo took center stage in the world of interior decor, aligning perfectly with the trend of idealizing Asian influences, which was also reflected in fashion through dragon-printed dresses, elaborate chopstick updos, and calligraphy tattoos. Remember those days? In homes characterized by a more minimalist design aesthetic, mood lighting held paramount importance, and the use of up lighting for indoor plants became a favored technique. In contrast to the minimalist style of the early 90s, the later part of the decade witnessed the emergence of boho chic. This eclectic and free-spirited style drew inspiration from 1960s hippie culture, the landscapes of the American Southwest, and diverse global textiles. Rooted in an appreciation for desert environments, the bohemian trend embraced collections of cacti and succulents as integral elements of its decor palette. Although Gen C has recently embraced Y2K aesthetics, they have left behind one of the most prevalent design styles from that era, Tuscan style. During the Y2K period, kitchens were often adorned with faux antique plaster, travertine tile, ceramic roosters, painted fruit motifs, granite countertops, and ornate iron candle holders. These elements were frequently paired with potted topperies and boxwood plants. However, what truly defined this style was not a specific plant, but the choice of planters. The stress and age faux Italian planters were emblematic of Tuscan decor. Apart from the Tuscan trend, the turn of the century was not a particularly fertile period for indoor plants. The prevailing tech utopianism of the 2000s brought forth a preference for cool, silvery color palettes, sleek futuristic interiors, transparent plastic furnishing, and blobby texture, an architectural style characterized by artificial looking designs that left minimal space for the inclusion of plants. The emergence of the modern farmhouse aesthetic in the 2010s ushered in a trend where almost everything, including plants, found its home in mason jars. This design style was marked by a fondness for upcycled containers in general, reflecting a preference for rustic and repurposed elements. Interestingly, despite its sustained popularity, this aesthetic is now gradually falling out of favor, perhaps due to its overexposure. 
plants closely associated with this particular style often feature silver-toned greenery such as eucalyptus along with the ever-present fiddle leaf fig. Additionally, the split leaf philodendron made a resurgence from its 60s heyday, mirroring the revival of full mid-century furniture and decor that gained prominence in the early 2010s. So, what lies on the horizon? With the ascendancy of the Japandi trend, a fusion of Scandinavian and Japanese design influences, the principle of minimalism takes center stage. We foresee a shift towards meticulously chosen statement plants that are sculptural in nature yet retain an overall sense of openness and simplicity. In the grand scheme of houseplant decor, the finite number of plant species suitable for indoor environments imposes a natural constraint. Consequently, it's only a matter of time before these trends make their cyclical return. Until then, we'll be delicately tending to our beloved money tree. As we wrap up our exploration of houseplant trends, we're reminded that these green companions are not just decorations, but mirrors of our changing tastes. Looking ahead, the Japanese trend promises a minimalist, sculptural approach to indoor greenery. In the cyclical world of trends, one thing is certain, houseplants will always have a place in our hearts and homes. So, whether you're a seasoned plant enthusiast or a newcomer, remember that your choice of greenery reflects the spirit of the times. As we conclude, we leave you with the assurance that houseplants will continue to thrive in our spaces and enrich our lives. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more awesome gardening tips and tricks. And if you really loved it and want to show some extra support, consider leaving a little something in the tip jar using the super thanks feature below. Your support helps me keep providing you with honest, top quality houseplant care tips, sponsor free so your plants can keep on thriving. Now, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Did you find this video helpful? Do you have any questions or tips you'd like to share? Let me know in the comments below. As always, I appreciate your feedback and love learning from my fellow plant enthusiasts. Thanks for tuning in and I can't wait to see you all in the next video. Remember, keep growing and keep thriving. See you in the next video.